Oh, hello! Are you guys ready for an update video? <laughs> hello, my little chickadees, and welcome back to another episode of Gina is a Bamf. Low key, kind of grossed out right now because this cash is just like resting against my face. And it was probably in someone's butthole at one point. <laughs> People seem to enjoy my Marrying Millions commentary series, so I thought it'd be fun to do a little update video on our beloved Sugar and Splenda couples. See who went broke, who murdered who, who secured the bag, who now has a sugar infant, not to be confused with sugar baby. Let's do it. Let's kick it off with sweet little Brie and Grandpa Bill. Remember this adorable couple with a modest age gap of only 40 years, which is totally normal and not creepy at all because it's legal. It's legal, they're not doing anything wrong. The law is always ethical. Hey, remember when you could own people? Ah, Brie just looking as cute as a button. Ah! Uh. If the Crypt Keeper and Martha Stewart had a child together, it would be Bill. As you can see, we didn't raise enough money for Bill's $30 crest whitening kit. I'm still accepting donations for Grandpa Bill's $30 crest whitening kit. If you would like to contribute, please follow the GoFundMe link in the description below. His teeth are the same color as the balloons. How can you be a multi-millionaire and your teeth still look like that? I don't understand. Bree just turned 22, so she has a solid three more years until Bill trades her in for a new model. It honestly looks like he took the frosting from the cake and just like rubbed it all over his jacket. Bill has some questionable fashion choices, but that means he clearly cares about his appearance and the way he presents himself, which again brings me back to why haven't you gotten your teeth fixed, dude? So it looks like they're still together and thriving. I couldn't be happier for this Totally legal, non-creepy couple. Secure the bag, Brie. Secure the bag. Let's move on. Next up, we have Rosie and Drew, who ended up getting married in Costa Rica. Now, I think these two are genuinely in love with each other. Rosie got a ton of shit for only being in it for the money, which I can assure you is not the case because Drew doesn't have any. Dude has like $4,000 worth of back taxes and he had to put his company's lawn care equipment up for collateral valued at like $45,000. I am by no means a financial expert, but that doesn't sound very millionaire-esque to me. Most of the time, Drew stays at his 70-acre farm in the country. And this is his real house. Sorry, Rosie, it looks like you're gonna have to get one of those J-O-Bs, which we know you're not a fan of. Having a job may conflict with her singing career. I still jump when the phone rings. It gives me shivers to remember your voice in my ear. Holding on to me in my dreams. Now I've got dark circles and an empty bed. Do you feel as uncomfortable as I do? You were addicted to when the heroin hits hard. This is something I would make when I was like a bored 12 year old. The scene is set perfectly with that 1998 monitor and those teddy bears. A little too much Xanax, Rosie. This is a 12 year old's room, but I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because I am definitely not a singer. Plus this was posted back in like 2016. A lot can happen in four years. Maybe all of Drew's money went to Rosie's voice lessons. Okay, this one's pretty recent from five months ago. There's magic in the way you speak and I'm under your spell but I can't get the grip to be honest all y'all friends fake for letting you post this that money definitely didn't go to voice lessons moving on next up we got Bron T I mean Brian and John T Brian left out the whole I'm living with my parents at the age of 50 uh, thing like six months into their relationship. So, you know, a little sketchy. John T ended up getting cold feet like 10 minutes before the wedding, which I can't really blame her. Oh, I'm sorry. And she's out of there, folks. She dodged that man child with just seconds left on the clock. I can't imagine my life without John T. All right, Brian, looking swole. Hitting the gym. My sister used to tell me not to become a muscle head because single women may think they'll have to go to the gym too. Don't fret, new girlfriend. I'll gladly lay on the couch drinking beers and eating chips to get a nice beer belly, if you prefer. LMAO. Oh, you hear that, ladies? Bri is willing to get dad bod to preserve your fragile self-image. <laughs> what a gentleman. Dude, stop acting like you're doing women a favor. When you live in Minnesota, laying on the couch, drinking beer and eating chips 
is like your natural state because if you go outside, you'll die of hypothermia. Time for all of us to get rich. First things first, we need to collect any old monies that may be ours. Go to the government website, click your state, then enter your name. It will tell you if you had any extra money in an old savings account, insurance payment, refund, utility deposit, and so on. I actually did it yesterday and got $70 from an old water bill deposit I forgot about years ago. Please comment if you discover any money owed to you. Good luck and you may owe me lunch. Oh, is that all, Bri? I just owe you some lunch. But a whole $70, like that is at least one Xbox game and a sour candy. That's pretty exciting stuff for Bri here. It's been a few months since our breakup and no word from John T. I haven't kissed another girl or been on one date since our first meeting. Now I hear she's moved on. So obviously it's time to enter the dating scene. John T. ditched your ass at the altar. Go kiss other girls. But remember, you need both mom and dad's permission before you have a sleepover. Let's see what John T. is up to. Lots of modeling pics. Oh, hey ladies, did you finally find a qualified eyebrow waxer? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Oh my God, is that Colty? From 90 Day Fiance? No. Apparently John T has a proclivity for grown ass men who still live at home with their mama. Damn girl, save some for the rest of us. Next up, we got Sean and Megan. These two tied the knot and no prenup was signed. Let's see what miraculous things Sean is doing with his unlimited budget. We have an unlimited budget. An unlimited budget. Unlimited. So I guess he's the founder of a nonprofit which basically sends Rochester kids to Catholic school. As a former Catholic school student, you know what a guaranteed way to turn your child atheist? Send them to Catholic school. So I guess you could say he is doing some good for the world. Celebrity supporters are Dalai Lama and Jeremy Renner. How does Jeremy Renner weasel his way into everything? But these two may very well be holding Sean's nonprofit afloat because his company is no longer in business. Let's see how unlimited that budget is now. Thur. <laughs> So that'll conclude our recap video. I'm not gonna go into these two because they're deathly boring or these two because they're clearly a fake couple. Also, season two of Merry Millions is set to premiere around July 2020. It ain't over yet, folks. We still go win. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so excited to take these butthole earrings off and I'll catch you next time. Bye.